Hey guys, and uh, thanks for joining me once again on my video tutorial. Uh, my name is Ken. For those that are new to my video tutorials, uh, today we're going to be covering how to create a custom menu system in your RPG Maker engine. Um, you may be watching this on my YouTube channel or uh, I also have my blog, lotussoftware.blogspot.com. I post all my video tutorials and just um, a lot more information on various games that I've done in the past or thoughts on games being made by um, you know triple a companies as well as indie games uh, i try to you know give some love to them so you can check me out on my blog here and also on my facebook page i put all my videos there uh, so you guys have a lot of options to you know view my content now uh, getting back to this tutorial here <clears throat> there are two ways that i'm aware of and and in how you can make a custom menu system, uh, two different approaches. Now you can either take the more active real-time approach, um, and I made this map here for uh, the purposes of this tutorial, um, and this map utilizes a radial menu system, which I'll show you guys in just a second. Um, so you can do it that way, or uh, another example is from my game Eden Gate. Uh, it's not as active, um, <coughs> or it doesn't display over the playable map. Uh, instead, when you uh, press the X button to go into your menu, you're teleported to a different map where all the uh, information and the graphical user interface is displayed. So those are the two approaches. Um, it might sound a bit confusing, so I think it's better to, tell, uh, to show rather than tell. So let me give you guys a demonstration of this radial menu system now. So once again, uh, you know, we changed our uh, Ninja Dude character for uh, a more appropriate looking character set uh, in terms of uh, the look and feel of this map here. And when I press the X button, you can see the radial menu system pops up. And uh, let me lower the volume a bit here uh, so you guys can hear me. Okay, so <laughs> here's a radial menu. When I press the right button, you can see that it switches between the various icons here. There are only four icons and you know that was kind of to keep it simple and uh, to the point. And when I press left, uh, it goes the opposite direction. And right on the bottom you can see a description of what that icon uh, represents. Um, you know, some people might not need it. Uh, you have a little description right under the icon, you know, it says item, status, equip, and quit. But uh, for those people that want to give their menus um, a bit more of a maybe unique look or a more interesting look, you know, I try to add movement, as you can see, um, just from when I switch to the between the various icons, and also I try to add movement on the bottom, so you can see the information scrolling from the right to the left hand side, and I think that just makes it look more interesting. Um, if I press enter on status, a new window comes up with this. Uh, with this GUI, uh, you know, providing some generic information for an, an RPG game. Um, and I think once you figure out how to do, you know, how to do this, how to get to this point, um, you can pretty much figure out how to do the rest. So right now I don't have anything set up for equip or items, but that's for the purpose of time. And uh, you know, once again, once you, once I show you guys how to do this, then you should figure it out for yourselves. Um, and then finally, when you go to uh, quit, you return to the title screen. Now that's the more active approach. So let me show you guys um, a new menu from uh, Eden Gate. Um, this I have not shown to anyone yet, so this will be a treat for my uh, video uh, tutorial viewers. So when I go to play, and I'm gonna load this uh, file right here. So, as you can see, the save menu itself is a more active approach. It's not a radio menu system, but um, it implements similar uh, techniques. Now, if I go to the actual, um, let me lower the volume once again. Uh, music's kind of loud. Once I go to the actual menu system, you know, I have a couple of options here. I'm not going to show any of these off just yet, um, but I will show off the bestiary uh, menu. So. 
Here you can see all the families of uh, the monsters in the game. And when I scroll down, we only have one uh, of the monsters from Eden Gate scanned into our database. And when I hit enter on that monster, uh, a ton of information pops up. So we have its name, its family, what level it is, um, how much HP it has. So you can see this monster uh, has the ability to protect itself. Uh, you can also see what it drops and what you can steal from it, as well as strengths, weaknesses, and you know the summary. Uh, it's a lot of information, but you know for any good bestiary, I think it's imperative. Um, so what I'm going to show you guys um, is another new uh, ability that I've never shown before. So if I go to offensive magic um, and hit scan. We're going to move our character to the left a bit and approach this fire sprite and use the, oh uh, well. See this fire sprite has the ability to vanish so it'll do that sometimes and now I'm going to use the ability on it. So there you go, we just scanned this enemy and when I go back to my uh, database go to bestiary you can see uh, right here that the fire sprite has appeared in our bestiary and when we press enter you can view all of its details so this is not a uh, you know active uh, menu approach that um, I showed you guys previously this is actually taking the player to a different map where all this information and all the coding is being uh, implemented into so that's the second way of creating your menu systems. All right, so let's get started on the tutorial part um, of this video. Um, the first thing you are going to want to do, these are prerequisites. Before you get into your editor and you know start coding your, um, your custom menu system, what you want to do is you want to open up Photoshop or Paint or whatever you have available to you. I prefer Photoshop. Um, and you want to create your graphics. Now, uh, this is the map right here that I made in Photoshop um, in its entirety. These are the icons that I'm using for my radial menu system. Um, this is going to be the background for the information uh, being displayed, you know, the scrolling text. This is the text itself that scrolls from right to left. And finally, we have the status. Uh, window that pops up when you click on the status button or press enter on the status button. So you want to create all these graphics, you know, have something in mind. And once you're finished with those, just go to the import export resources button right here. Go to, you know, picture and import all of those into your um, into your game folder. Now, um, in order to create this map and you know when we go into the coding here this is the database um, a lot of what we're going to be using to make this custom menu system um, I've gone over in previous video tutorials so if any of this sounds confusing to you I uh, go back and watch some of my previous tutorials um, for example conditional branches we went over last time variables and switches I have a video tutorial for that um, creating your own panorama and you know just the overlays and water effects and all that I have uh, I believe two or three video tutorials dedicated to those <clears throat> so you know go back and watch those uh, same thing goes for the database and all these entries here um, what is new for this video tutorial is the key input process so that's what I'm going to go over in more detail and then we'll just kind of run down the lines and I'll tell you what I'm doing basically. So yeah, as far as the key input processing goes you have a couple of options here. Store key code in. Um, when you double click this it's going to open up the variables window and you basically want to select any one of these entries. Name it uh, however you wish. Um, I would recommend naming it something appropriate so when you go back into your variables window you know uh, you know what uh, the entry is uh, designated towards. So I named it CMS or custom menu systems key input. Okay, so 
right under that we have option and wait until key pressed. This uh, box being checked waits until the user uh, or the player of, of your game hits any of the following buttons under keys to process. So right now it waits until the player hits any of these down, left, right, up, decision key which is Z or enter, uh, cancel key which is escape or X, and the shift key. You can also check number keys and the, these uh, special character keys. Um, however, we're not using these so I don't really need to. In fact, I can even uncheck shift key if I wanted to, but as a default it checks all of these for you. Okay, so another thing you'll notice next to each uh, key is a number. So down key has one, whereas shift key has seven. Uh, what this indicates is the value for this variable. So right now um, basically it's going to check if down key is pressed then uh, variable 41 will have the value of one. Okay. If shift key is pressed then variable 41 uh, CMS key input will have the value of seven. And this paired with the conditional branch so you can check to see what value is being stored into uh, this variable 41. So right now we're checking to see if the value 6, okay, or the escape or cancel key is being pressed. So if it's equal to 6, so if conditional, we have this condition set, if this variable is equal to 6, then everything that follows that line will occur, okay? So that's basically what you need to know about the key input process processing. Um, now I want to kind of drill one important uh, thing into you, into you guys and that is you need to think about custom menu systems logically, okay? Uh, if you, you know, just go about it not knowing what you, you know, have in mind, uh, you kind of just playing around with it, you can do that but you're probably not going to get very far or you're going to deviate. Um, greatly from your uh, initial intentions. So what you need to do is before even making the graphics, um, you need to like really sit down and think about what kind of menu system you want. Now before I made uh, any of these codes, um, before I made any of these graphics, I had in mind, um, make sure, okay. I had in mind um, you know how I wanted my menu to look as you can see right here. So I based my, you know, intentions of creating a radio menu, I, I based that on, you know, the graphics that you see displayed here, and then I also based that on the coding. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, another thing to keep in mind is when you're using pictures, um, you're probably not going to know what values uh, you need to set. Um, so for example, these variables are set to ne negative 55 for the icons Y axis, uh, this uh, icon equip icon, uh, its y axis is set to negative 7, this icon equip uh, x axis is set to positive 40. Now I didn't you know already know what these numbers were going to be, It's it was a bit of a guessing game, I had to play around you know set this to negative 50, go into you know the engine, play the game, see where this icon appeared. If I thought it appeared too you know too high up or too high down, I had to adjust this y axis accordingly. So it's going to be a lot of tinkering, a lot of you know guessing, but once you when you have an idea and once you you know kind of uh, test uh, the actual output, the actual outcome, with uh, what you currently have in your database or in your event commands or you know whatnot, and then you can kind of play around um, in a more educated way and achieve your uh, results a lot quicker than you know just not having a clue of uh, what you're doing. So <clears throat> those are the two things that you need to keep in mind when creating custom menu systems or it, actually anything complex, uh, even battle systems for example in this engine or whatever engine you use, you are going to have to play around a bit and you need to have a good uh, fundamental idea to work off of, okay? So now we're just going to go um, line by line I think is going to be the fastest way um, to do this. <clears throat>
Um, I created two entries here, so CMS0 and CMS1. CMS0 basically just brings up the menu um, based on preset coordinates, okay? So when I have show picture here, icon status, you can see this image right here is, you know, appears on a preset coordinate, so 155 for its x-axis, 70 for its y-axis. You can do it this way, you might be wondering why do I need uh, variable references, um, which is what I'm using here. So if I go to show picture icon status here, it's not using specific coordinates. Instead, it's using variable uh, a variable reference. You might be wondering why you need that. Well, let me give you guys a demonstration. So if I uncheck this, call that, parallel process this, and switch the uh, switch on, and then play it now. You can see when I go into, well, it's doing a lot of other things because these are also switched on. So let me turn these off for now. Okay. So if I press X now, you can see that it does appear, you know, just fine. And if I press X, it disappears just fine. But what happens if I'm not scrolling anymore? Um, and I go all the way over here to the right. Well, if I press X, it still appears, but not over, you know, around the hero. And this is an example of what I meant by you need to have a good idea of what you want uh, beforehand, okay? Um, if I go all the way to the right of this map, it's just going to show up in the center like it always would, you know, because it's set to those specific coordinates. Now, if I use a variable reference instead of those specific coordinates so I'm gonna turn this off and we're gonna call this instead <laughs> so now it appears just fine and if I go all the way to the right of this map you can see that the uh, menu actually appears around the hero once again so uh, you know that's what I wanted um, initially and that's what I had to kind of figure out how to do um, and that's what I want uh, you guys to take um, that you can always play around with you know uh, your ideas and to kind of play around with the methods I should say to achieve your initial vision um, so let's just go through this line. Um, CMS1, uh, this entry right here basically is what will call your menu when you press X, and it also gets rid of your menu when you press X again, okay? So that's what this entry does. Um, how I go about doing that, I'll go through it now. Uh, so once again, key input process is the first thing you want, which can be once again found on page three of your event commands, key input processing. Next, you want a conditional branch, which can be found on page three, also conditional branch. And you want to set that to a variable. You want to check if your variable key input, or what we set over here, is set to six or X uh, and escape. Uh, if it's equal to that, then the following will occur. Next, you want another conditional switch. And this switch is checking to see if the status menu is on. So if that, um, let me show you guys here. If this window appears, um, then your status menu switch is set to on. So it, this would be on. Um, if it is on, then when you press X, what it basically does is it gets rid of that uh, picture. So I'm changing, I'm uh, moving this picture 36 to a transparency of 100, which means it disappears. The reason I'm checking for this uh, first is because if I have, let me just show you guys, so what's going on right now is if I press X, I open up my menu, and I hit status, this window appears. So if I press X again, it's going to check to see if this window is up. If it's not up, then, you know, if I press X, the whole menu would disappear. But because it is up and I press X, just that window disappears, see? So that's what you need to check. And um, 
Obviously, if you had a equip uh, window and an items window, then you would need switches to check to see if those were turned on, okay? So we change uh, this picture's transparency, make it disappear, and we set it to, you know, under option, halt other processes. So it will halt everything for 0.3 seconds, and then after 0.3 seconds, you will have this line which erases the picture entirely. In, um, entirely, okay. Then you have status menus off, okay? So now status menu is off. Next time you press six, it's going to check once again to see if status menu is on, but because it's not on, it's going to go to the else handler, okay? So right here, I have an options execute custom handler if condition is not met. That's what this is. Everything under else handler is checking to see what happens if status menu is set to off, okay? And this in its entirety is basically what allows the menu to disappear when you press X. So what we're doing now under the else handler, we're setting up another conditional branch to see if custom menu system, the switch right here is set to on or off, excuse me. If it is set to off, um, that means that the menu has not been displayed, then the following will occur. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to forbid the main menu. If I did not do that, so if I get rid of that and go back and play it, and I press X, the main menu appears, okay? That's not what we want. We don't want the ugly default menu system. So if it is set to off, um, what you're going to do is go to page 3 and then you're going to go to um, allow disallow main menu and hit forbid okay so that will prevent your default menu system from popping up the next thing you want to do is you want to set the variable references for each of your um, icons so if I go back to the Photoshop uh, icon window I have four icons here so we need a total of uh, eight variable references um, an X and Y for each so an X and Y for status an X and Y uh, reference for equip X and Y for quit and an X and Y variable reference for items okay so if we go back you can see that here I have variables 44 to 54 dedicated to those four okay so I have icon stat X icon stat Y equip exit and item Okay, and what I'm doing here is um, the first page variable operations. Okay, and then I have icon status. Okay, so that's the status icon. Uh, X is operation set equal to, and I have it set equal to the hero because I want it to appear around the hero. Okay, so the sprite hero, screen relative. Once again, screen relative has to do with pictures. The X and Y coordinates has to do with tiles. We're not working with tiles, we're working with pictures. So, screen relative to X for this, and for the next one, it's going to be screen relative to Y, okay? And I do the same thing for the equip, X and Y for the exit icon X and exit icon Y, and for the item icon X and item icon Y, okay? It's all going to be screen uh, and set to the hero. Um, what I have right here is um, kind of adjusting where the status icon appears in terms of its Y axis. So it was appearing a little too south um, of where I wanted it to be. Um, it was appearing over the hero. Instead, I want it to appear above the hero, so I'm subtracting the y-axis by 55. Um, if I did not do that, so let me show you guys if I just get rid of that and go to my menu, you can see the status icon will appear over the hero, okay? Obviously, that's not what I want, so I'm going to put that back in. I want it to appear above. Same thing here, um, I'm just changing the y-axis for the equip icon. Um, 
I'm changing it so that it is raised up a bit and then I'm changing the x-axis to plus 40 so that it moves to the right. For the exit icon, I'm moving it to plus 30 so it is below the hero when I press X. And for the items uh, icon, I am adjusting it so it's to the left of the hero um, and it's raised up a bit so it's a bit uh, higher than it would be otherwise. And I do want to apologize if uh, this seems a bit redundant, but I'm trying to scrutinize the details so, you know, for those who are new to this, um, can get a firm understanding. Um, I know I'm beating this to death, going over each one of these, um, but I just want to be clear, uh, you know, you can always skip around if, you know, it's obvious to you or whatever. Okay, so, uh, this will basically, uh, instantiate uh, the icons and set their references um, what we want to do next is have them actually appear okay so right now so far we don't have the icons appearing anywhere all we're doing is setting their coordinates so what I have next is a sound effect which just indicates that you you know pressed um, the X or cancel key and that's just to kind of give it's kind of just good practice. It gives them a audio uh, feedback. Um, it gives that to the player, and uh, yeah, once again, it's just good practice. You know, if you enter a menu or exit a menu or uh, you know move about uh, within the menu system, you want to have some sort of sound effect to indicate that you are um, doing so. So you want to have visual as well as uh, auditory uh, cues. Uh, so that's what that line is.